Welcome to the universe in a seashell, the podcast dedicated to science, life, and girl power. I'm Kara Bartek, and I'm your host. I'm a PhD, an author, and I want to make this world a more equal and opportune place, one girl at a time. chicken bird. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Kara and I'm your host. And today I am joined by the lovely Caroline. Hi guys. So what I want to know is who out there has been watching the sky this summer? Who's been checking out the phases of the moon? Who's been looking at the summer constellations? Well, we've got the ones that are always in the sky, right? Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, that's where the Big Dipper is. And in fact, that's the one that Penny keeps referring to as the Bear Constellation. Because on my star watching app, they come up like a bear, right? Yeah, they look like a bear on it. (laughs) Well, but there's also some really cool summer constellations that you guys can check out by downloading my star watching kit the link will be in the description all you have to do is sign up for my mailing list so i can let you know about all of the cool things that we have going on in the podcast and you'll get your own handy dandy guide to the summer constellations because remember they're not always the same except for ursa major ursa minor right Mm, they're not always the same okay so today we're going to be talking all things the moon what do you think about the moon cc the moon is a very unusual planet. It's not really a planet, but it's still really cool. It's it's a heavenly body. It's considered a satellite, right? Which kind of sounds weird. I a know. A satellite? A satellite is metal. Okay. I'm using highly technical terms that all of our space scientists use, which they call the things that orbit around a planet, they're satellites. So this is kind of an interesting thing and a a little tidbit of information for you. So we have satellites that orbit the Earth that kind of beam down all of our good iPhone juice, right? But then there are these other natural satellites that exist in our solar system. So we've got the planets that are orbiting the sun, But then the planets are also orbited a lot of times by their own natural satellites, which are their moons. And we're going to be talking about the Earth's moon. Okay? Deal? Okay! (laughs) So what do you think about that big, scary face on the moon? Right? When when you see a full moon, doesn't it kind of look like there's somebody there kind of looking at you with a really creepy stare? No. Okay, they call that the man on the moon. You're, you're supposed to help me out here. Are you talking about Neil Armstrong? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, anyway. So we're going to be talking about that face on the moon, all of those craters, how it gets there. We're going to be talking about Neil Armstrong, too, by the way. Good segue. Good segue. But... I really want to know where they got the name the moon from. Where do you think they got that from? I don't know. Okay. Fortunately, I have my notes here. And the name moon comes from the old English term Mona. What do you think about that? Mona. Okay, so Mona basically means to measure or a month okay it's referring to these measurements of time now why why do you think 
our ancestors, the ones that spoke the really old English, not new English, not super cool English, like what's the word chicken bird, but the old, old English, like how art thou? Why do you think that they would describe the moon in terms of a measurement? Because it takes a whole month for, a, for an entire, for all the phases. <gasps> You've been studying, haven't you? Yes. High five. We've been doing pot. Our last one, she told me, so oh. now I know. Yeah, this is take two. Yes. We we originally had Penny on the podcast, but she it did beep a lot. Out boom. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, she's tired, so I get it. But you can't beep and then try well and also she was trying to take apart the mics not cool man not cool she was like messing with them like turning something out we were mom was like penny don't mess with that and she was like oh i'm not dude okay so and here's the thing you can't trust penny with taking apart things because she is definitely into Taking apart household appliances. She's taking apart our grandma and grandpa's deep freezer, refrigerator, and, oh, and also their dishwasher. Yeah, and she puts them back together on her own terms. So, I don't know. I like They almost bought another one. They were so scared. Yeah, like it was bad. Everything was thawing out. There was like runny pizza and like squishy ground beef everywhere. But she did put it back together. That's the good news. But Ma, but Gigi and Papa got really mad at her. Yeah, they did. They got mad at her. They were like, Penny, you better never do that again. But I think that this really shows what a great conceptual kind of engineering mind she has. Now, of course, but it's annoying in the meantime. But anyway, okay, we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Okay. The Too much Penny. Too much Penny. Yes. Okay, now another term for the moon is Luna. You've heard that, right? Yes. Yeah, Luna. Spanish. Yeah, it's a Spanish word, right? That's, Luna. to me, that's, that's really pretty. I kind of actually wish we could just call the moon Luna. It sounds very swarthy, very exotic. Luna, Luna. What if that was English? That would be really cool. We'd just say it Luna. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't have that really amazing Luna. accent. Luna. Okay. So the moon was actually formed four point five billion years ago and but here's the deal. That's much younger than the solar system. Now, why do you think that matters? Mm -hmm. Okay. So conventional wisdom usually says that the universe was basically formed all at one time. So with the planets, stars, all that kind of stuff, generally along the same time frame. But the fact that the moon is younger than the Earth tells us something about how it was formed. Okay? Now, so follow me here. So the prevailing thought for how the moon was actually formed was that a... A big heavenly body, basically as, as large as Mars, actually... Like an hit, asteroid? Yes, exactly. It hit the Earth, and it created an impact. Okay, now this... And they even know the name of it. Thea, okay? It Did was, they name it, or...? Scientists. Okay. See, the, hey, hey, here's another reason to be a scientist. You get to name stuff. Penny wants to name the flower. Well, she needs to be a scientist. Okay, that's all I've got to say. Well, anyway, so they think that this giant rock the size of Mars hit the Earth, and all of the junk that was ejected from the Earth, mountains, ditches, candy bars. Candy bars! Okay, I guess that was too long ago for candy bars, right? But all of the stuff that was ejected out into space is actually forming our moon, okay? Now, it, I'm not saying that it all came out as one perfect sphere. The moon is made out of cheese? <laughs> she cracks herself up. <laughs> the moon is made out of cheese? <laughs> oh. 
help me. Somebody help me. Anyway, basically what happened is gravity pulled all of this space junk together and formed the moon. Okay? Did it take a long time to form it? Well, nobody really knows. So, I don't know. You know what? You need to grow up and be a, an astronomer and figure it out for us. What do you think? Uh-uh. No? Okay. Well, anyway, so now when you look up in the sky, besides cheese, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, cheese. Does, what does the, the moon look like? It has lots of holes. Yeah. Okay. Is it Swiss cheese? <laughs> I, I'm glad that you cracked yourself up. I, I'm so glad. It's Swiss cheese. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway. So, the, that Swiss cheese that you see is actually craters on the surface of the moon okay now there is a crater that's on the moon it's the largest crater there the south pole atkin basin and it's 1390 miles wide in diameter or uh 2240 kilometers okay listen to me it's not only the largest giant basin and impact is it the on the biggest? moon no we're talking wide right now Ugh. but it's also the second largest confirmed impact crater in our solar system boom our moon is famous boom okay anyway swish cheese <laughs> okay <laughs> I think Caroline has a piece of Swiss cheese lodged in her brain. I'm just saying. I saw you eating all those Elsa cheese sticks earlier. That was mozzarella. Okay, whatever. Okay, listen. Now, Caroline, <laughs> despite her silly, silly jokes, has pointed out a very, very important feature of the moon, which is that Swiss there are cheese. very dark spots on the moon. Okay, now, these are called the Maria. Now, do you remember when we went to McDonald Observatory and we went to the star party? And we yes. actually went to the star party during the full moon, so we really couldn't see the deep space stuff. So what we did is we learned a lot about the moon, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Maria... That's actually, which by the way, that's another beautiful, beautiful word. That's actually Latin for seas. Do you remember that? Latin? Yeah, for seas, like an ocean. The Maria. Okay, so now, now I'm, what I'm, I'm not saying that the moon is covered in oceans. What I'm saying is that the moon has been impacted by a lot of comets, asteroids, all kinds of stuff like that. And it made a ton of volcanic eruptions, okay? And so that's what we're seeing, these dark spots. So when you look up at the full moon and you see that face, you're seeing these dark spots. Well, that's the Maria. So it's basically volcanoes? It's actually lava flow. So like pools of lava. Yeah. That have I think that's dark. where they got the name. Because it's pools of lava in now, these craters. Now listen. I, I've got to talk. Because the Maria is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things about the moon. Not only because it just sounds beautiful. But you can see these Maria from Earth without a telescope. So, so let me tell you about some of these visible features. And I want you guys to go out there and look, okay? Send me an email when you see these things. Remember, universeinaseashell at gmail.com. Drop me a line and let me know what you're doing, what you're seeing when you're looking up at the moon. Now, the biggest crater, which is on the, the bottom side of the moon, so if you're looking directly at the moon, 
it's it's kind of on the bottom and it's a little bit to the right it's called Tycho now this isn't a Maria this is just a big big giant crater okay and it, it, it to me it almost looks like you know how an orange has that that little thing at the bottom that that little woody part that's like basically where the orange attaches to the tree mm -hmm. it's almost like a belly button right well that to me is what Tycho looks like do you see it Caroline and I are actually looking at a, at a map of the moon so, but we're going to describe some of the, the bigger features that are the most interesting, in my opinion. Okay, now, if you go, if again, you're looking at the full moon and you're kind of looking to the right, there's going to be a big dark spot way near the top, okay? And it's one of the largest mares, and that is the sea of serenity. Do you see it, Caroline? Yeah. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link to a, a map of the moon. So as I'm describing it, you guys can click on it and see exactly what I'm talking about. But isn't that a cool name? The Sea of Serenity? It, it kind of makes me think like, man, if I was like a space traveler, like to be at a foreign place like that a foreign sea the sea of serenity how amazing is that what is ser what does serenity mean serenity means calm and peace like can you imagine like i bet you that's exactly what it's like on the moon calm and serene ah. okay now directly below that again it's over here on this right side of the moon there's the sea of tranquility now, how beautiful does that sound? Do you like that? Yes. What does tranquility mean? Tranquility, again, is, is almost like serenity. It's calm, peace. It's like when you wake up in the morning and you're watching cartoons and you're eating your waffle, scratching your rear end on the couch. <laughs> I'm sorry that I like to scratch my rear end while I'm eating. <laughs> so on this right side, there's all these beautiful beautiful names there's the sea of nectar the sea of vapors the sea of clouds and again i'm going to be posting a link to this map now if you move over to the left hand side the seas start to sound a little more crazy so right at the very top we've got the sea of cold Ooh, what do you think about that sea of cold and maybe it's cold in that spot, like a cold rush. I, I'm here to tell you that all of it's cold, because space is cold and the moon has zero atmosphere. So all of this wonderful, beautiful summer weather that we've been experiencing, yes, um, it, it ain't like that on the moon. It's a little different. It's a little cold up there. Because, again, they don't have, well, it's also, it can They don't it can have also, heaters. They don't have heaters, but, well, and it can be, so, it, and le, let me make a correction, because I'm sure you're going to correct me anyways. It can be extremely hot and extremely cold. And you're exposed to all of the harshness of space, like radiation, meteors, all of that kind of good stuff. I'm just seeing this one, and it looks really weird. What? Down here near the middle, like... Okay, the Caroline, west, she's... Like the west part, if you're on the moon, I found, it says right here, the ocean of storms. Yes, okay, so that's another one of my favorite seas, but look look how huge it is. Now, this is to the left-hand side, which Caroline already pointed out. That's the west side of the moon. Um, it's east in the sky. Um, it's the ocean of storms. Now, what do you think about that? The Ocean of Storms. Now, that's kind of a cool name, but it doesn't sound very peaceful or tranquil, does it? I think that a lot of storms form there. Okay. There's also the Sea of Showers. Ugh. The Sea of Moisture. But again, I'm going to be posting a link to this amazing these well i just love this these really truly cool features of the moon so anyway and you can see these with the naked eye that's the great part you don't have to have any kind of special equipment you don't have to have a telescope you don't you don't have to have any of this all you have to do 
is go outside and look at the full moon. There's this really tiny, there's this one that I just found and it says the sea that, the sea that has become known. Yes, and I'm sure that there's a backstory on that, which we'll have to, we'll have to look at that. But anyway, okay, enough with the mares, which again, that's my favorite feature on the moon. It's so cool. It sounds so pretty, and the idea of these huge, huge lava flows being on the moon, it has to be amazing to see in person. Anyway, yes. so, but here's the deal. Water does not exist on the moon. So you're going you to have to take that? loads of water. Yeah, the astronauts who have been on the moon, which we will be talking about, did take lots of water. Okay, so, because here's the deal. So liquid water you know, H2O, generally frozen when it's in space, traveling around in comets, which is pretty common. Um, it cannot last on the surface of the moon. Because why? The moon, the moon can be hot or cold. Well, what does it lack that we have? Air. An atmosphere. Oh. Yeah, so it doesn't have an atmosphere like we have, right? Mm-hmm. Now, but here's the deal. Scientists have discovered that there may be pockets of water on the moon. And what they believe is that, I'm trying to wake my computer up. Sorry, guys. Got to wake my computer up so the recording doesn't time out. But anyway, um, scientists believe that they have been deposited there through strikes. Strikes on the moon. Like comets, meteors, all that kind mm -hmm. of good stuff. Okay. Now, the moon, if you've ever noticed, doesn't really change. Right? When you look at it? It never changes. Now, when we, we know that the earth rotates, right? It yes. spins on its axis. Well, guess yeah. what? The moon is in what's called synchronous rotation with earth. And so, basically, we always see one side of the moon. That's called the near side of the moon. There's a second side of the moon that's called the far side. Okay? Okay. Now, the far side is sometimes called the dark side of the moon. It's a really great album by Pink Floyd, too. Are you not a Pink Floyd fan? <sighs> you know so many books that I don't. Oh my goodness. Pink Floyd is an amazing band, not a book. I have not done my job as a mom. Actually, I probably have. I don't let you listen to Pink Floyd. So, but anyway, I digress. Now, the moon makes a complete orbit around the earth about every 27 days. Now, but the fact that the Earth is also moving in its orbit, it, it generally takes about a month for the moon to fully rotate. So that would be 29 days. So that goes back to our, our word, Mona, right? The old English word, and it yes, being month. month. Okay. Now, here's, here's something crazy. The distance between the moon and the Earth is about 250,000 miles. Mm. Can you believe that? No. Do you think you could run a mile? No. <laughs> Remember, you have to talk into the mic. No. Oh my gosh, I think you just busted everybody's eardrums. Okay, so... 200, now it does vary because the moon gets further out and it comes closer in depending on kind of where we're at in, in rotation and orbit. Now, because of this, because of the changing way that the moon orbits, we have phases of the moon, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't sound really thrilled. What's your favorite phase of the moon? full moon. Why is the full moon your favorite? Because you can see the entire moon. That's exactly right. So basically, uh, the full moon phase occurs when the moon is on the opposite side of the earth from the sun called opposition, which by the way, that's happening tonight with Saturn. 
Did you know that? Saturn is actually in opposition tonight, so it's going to make it very visible. Because here's the can deal we, with the sun. Can, can we see it? Yeah, let's finish our podcast. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I am tired. So am I. But I'm tired from sweeping and cooking. I'm tired and from working taking really. swim lessons. Listen. I don't even want to go there. Don't even want to go there. Anyway, so now, because here's the deal. When a heavenly body like Saturn or the moon is in opposition to the sun, that means that the earth is basically blocking out all of that brightness. Because the brightness basically obstructs our view, right? Yes. Because it gets, it's just too big, it's too fiery, and... You just can't see a whole lot. It's it's kind of like when you go out on a really sunny day and you're, you, you can't see very well, can you? No, I can't. It's basically a big, giant, ginormous star. It is. That's exactly what it is. Now, now the opposite of the new the full moon is the new moon, and this is when the moon cannot be seen because we are looking at the unlit half of the the moon. Okay, now this, the new moon occurs when the moon is directly between the earth and the sun. Okay, here's another one. A waxing crescent moon is when the moon looks like it's a crescent, right? So what does a crescent kind of look like? Like a fingernail almost. Like this. Like if you put your pointer finger and your thumb like and you bend both of them to like face toward each other but not really like out that's how it looks okay you could have just said fingernail or a watermelon slice Mm -hmm. okay so anyway now but it, it now waxing means that it's increasing okay so a waxing crescent moon means that it's it looks like a fingernail but it's gonna get bigger okay now there is another type of moon phase that's called the first quarter moon or half moon okay and this is when half of the lit portion of the moon is visible after the waxing crescent phase it comes basically about a week after the waxing like crescent like this yes like the moon is a circle and then you cut it in half yeah and i think i we're we're almost there like i was out earlier and i couldn't really see it that well because the sun was still kind of out but i think we're right at the half moon i need to i need to check it out but i believe we are Mm. now don't correct me for like you know the way that you normally do me and mom normally call that phase the taco phase i like that but it makes me very hungry. Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's also the waxing gibbous moon, which occurs when more than half of the lip portion of the moon can be seen and the shape increases or waxes. Okay. Then there's a waning gibbous, which occurs when more than half of the lip portion of the moon can be seen and the shape decreases or it wanes. So this is really important when describing moon phases. You're going to hear a lot of waxing, which actually means just getting bigger. Wax on. Yeah, you've never seen that movie? Wax on, wax off? No. Ugh. Anyway, or wanes, which means decreases. Okay? Okay. All right, then there's the last quarter moon. This is also the half moon. It's when half of the lit portion of the moon is visible after the waning gibbous. And then there is the waning crescent. And this is, now this is, there's that that one, there's the waxing crescent, which means that it's gonna get, it's gonna increase, it's gonna get bigger, fatter, right? As, yes. as the phase goes on. Well, there's also a waning crescent, which means that the, the, the crescent is actually decreasing. So it's going to get smaller and smaller. It's going to go from big taco to munched up taco. I'm thinking about tacos now. Why did you have to mention tacos? In fact, I think we should go to Taco Cabana tomorrow. I want to go to Taz. 
Taz is this really fabulous um, Indian restaurant in College Station. It is my absolute favorite. But Penny she said that she wants to go to Taz. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm. We're going. We're going to Taz. Okay. We're going to Taz. See, sometimes it's hit and miss with Penny. Sometimes she likes it, and sometimes she doesn't. Because she's a huge rice fan, so she loves the biryanas and all of that kind of good she's stuff. She's a picky eater. Sometimes she's a picky eater, and sometimes she's not. But anyway, I just have to tell her, I have to remind her of all of the rice dishes that they have. But we're getting off topic because you made me hungry. You made me get off topic. Now, there's another type of moon that's called the blue moon. Do you know what the blue moon is? Um, Don't look at my notes. This I've is a test. Blood moon. <laughs> I've never heard of the blue moon. Okay, so there's this expression that's once in a blue moon. And that means that something occurs very rarely. Now, the literal definition of the blue moon is a full moon that occurs twice in one month. And it's so rare. It only happens, I think, every like three or four years. Three or four years? That's why it's rare. Once in a blue moon. There's a, another great song by Earl Thomas Conley called Once in a Blue Moon. Is that a book? It's not a book. Listen to <laughs> you. You don't know Pink Floyd or Earl Thomas Conley? No. What am I doing? So what is your favorite band then? I guess it's um, Imagine Dragons. Imagine Dragons or Owl City. I, I love that song Fireflies. Yes, they have this song called Fireflies, and it's by Al City. Check it out. Mm. Now listen, if if I if I wasn't afraid to like infringe on the copyright of that song, I would play that because that is the perfect summer song, isn't it? All yes. about fireflies, and it has a really cool peppy beat. Peppy. Okay. So anyway, there. Now we've talked about the phases of the moon. There's there's eight of them, right? But there are also these special types of moons. Now, Cece talked about the blood moon. I know what the blood moon is. You don't have to cover in the notes. Quit cheating off of my note page. Okay, listen. Now, we've seen the blood moon, right? I got, I got, we had a sleepover. And after you and your friends were, like, super rowdy and, like, really made Finally me mad. Finally went to sleep. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, barely. I, I'm not even sure y'all actually ever slept. But anyway, I woke y'all we up. You were having fun. Obviously. Well, I woke I woke the girls up, and there was, it was the blood moon eclipse, wasn't it? And I yes. think it was, was it last summer? Or was it two summers ago? I don't remember. It was still school time. No, it was definitely during the summer. No, the next time, the, the, in the morning, we had to go to school, remember? Oh my goodness. Now everybody seems to think I'm a terrible mom. I would never wake you up at like two in the morning on a school night. I really wouldn't. Quit giving mm -hmm. me that look. Uh-huh. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so the blood moon is basically it's it's an eclipse that turns red. Okay. But now here's here's something crazy. Now I found this online. In some circles of Christian prophecy, a blood moon is a member of a special kind of lunar tetrad. Now, tetrad means four, okay? That is four total lunar eclipses in a row, each one separated by six lunar months. So I guess, like, crazy stuff happens, like, under the blood moon. Like, maybe you grow wings or a tail or something. Are you talking about Swiss cheese? <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand any of that. Uh, obviously you need a taco. Now, now there's also another type of moon called the harvest moon. Now, this really applies more to people who live in the Midwest because the harvest moon typically occurs in October, like autumn, okay? Are we in, like, that place where it occurs? No. Here's the deal. Because right now we're harvesting crops, and it is July, and it is very, very hot, but the harvest moon typically happens in October, and it's more, and that's when the, the, 
the farmers and producers in the Midwest typically get their crops out of the field, even, um, I believe, in, in Minnesota, where your Aunt Stephanie's dad is a farmer. I think that that's when they get their crops out of the field. I can't be sure. But anyway, the harvest moon is very big and very bright. And the idea is, is that it helps the farmers see their crops if they're working late in the field. Because, for example, dad worked late in the field harvesting some research tonight. Yeah. Is he still out? I just, that dinging a few seconds ago said, told me that he was back at his room. So, yeah, he was out pretty late. He was out pretty late. Now, there's also a, uh, okay, wait, no. This is really cool. Uh, so the moon is very much tied to farming and crop production and all that kind of stuff. So I found all of these really amazing names for the, the moon that occur in, in these different months of the year, okay? And this all came from the Farmer's Almanac. Did I say that? Almanac? Almanac. You said almanac. I think I'm I'm putting a lot of Texas twang on that. The farmer's almanac. Almanac. Okay. So let me let me read you some of these he names. He said almanac. So in January, they call it the wolf moon. Like a, a wolf howling at the moon. Arr! I, I think that's a cool name. February, the snow moon or the hunger moon. Ooh, spooky. Okay. February, oh, I'm sorry, March, worm moon, ew, 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 I hate worms. Crow moon, sap moon, or Linton moon? Okay, you're looking at my notes. Not cool. Not cool. I'm the <laughs> one that did the research. Okay, now I'm going to hide my, okay. The Linton moon, because that's kind of when Lent occurs. Now the worm moon, I've got to tell you something about worms. So I was with one of our producers, or one of our, our cooperators in, yeah. um, in the Corpus Christi area. And um, so he was doing some chemical control on so this worm infestation. And he, he told me, you know, you, you really don't have to worry about it because it was just the full moon. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, yeah, you didn't know that after the full moon, the headworms typically go away. We're going to talk about that on our, our next episode of the podcast, but that's an amazing phenomena that is really cool and, by the way, is very real. So, anyway. Is now, it like Bigfoot and Dogman? No. That's, that's a totally different podcast topic. But, anyway. So, in April, there's a seed moon, a pink moon, a sprouting grass moon or egg moon, also a fish moon. In May, there's a milk moon. June, the mead or the strawberry moon. Sometimes the rose or thunder. In July, it's the hay moon or the elk moon or thunder moon. I really like that one. Or the buck moon. Okay, get up out of my notes. <laughs> August, there's a corn moon, sturgeon moon or red moon. In September, it's the harvest moon or the full corn moon. In October, hunter's moon blood moon or the sanguine moon okay and i don't exactly know what they mean by that but i do know sanguination means like bleeding to death so i'm like whoa that's kind of crazy okay november is the beaver moon or the frosty moon and in december it's the oak moon the cold moon or the long night's moon <gasps> Those are cool names. I, 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 I feel like we should uh, bring Can those I see names the notes back. Real quick? No, you're not allowed to see the notes. No, that one in October kind of freaks me out. That. Okay, you need to back up off my notes. That one that you said that means bleeding to death. Now listen, you're getting me off track. Okay, let's let's keep on going. Okay, now now here's here's something that we need to talk about, which is. One of the most fun activities that a mom and two daughters can do, which is to watch the lunar eclipse, right? Now, Caroline, without, without the notes, tell us what the lunar eclipse is. Since you've seen it, just tell us. And you can't just blink your eyes. Again, this is an <laughs> audio recording. Nobody can see you blinking your eyes at me. <laughs> I'm just blinking my eyes. <laughs> 
So the lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes directly behind the earth and into its shadow. Okay. Now, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it, it, it's eerie. It's amazing. And it's eerie because you go out there and literally the moon just starts to darken. Right. It's like, okay, again, nobody can see it just you. turns black. It's really weird. But it's it's pretty amazing, and so can can you imagine what the our our ancestors thought about that? Because you know they didn't have all this artificial light, all these iPhones and computers, and all this kind of good stuff. They basically looked at the sky all the time, and the sky meant a lot to them. It it helped them navigate. It helped them grow crops. It helped them predict weather events. And then to be sitting out there and see the moon going away. Don't you think that would freak some people out? Because they would think, oh, the moon's going away. What are we going to do? We need the moon. <laughs> totally. That's the only thing we have, the moon. Okay, now I was going to talk a little bit about people going to the moon, but we're running so long. I think I'm going to save this for a totally different episode. But I think we covered a lot on the moon. What do you think? We did, and I'm tired. Okay. So can I go to bed? Thanks, Caroline. Um, guys, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Tell your friends about it. Um, let them know what you're learning, what you're doing. Um, let me know what you think about it. Universe in a seashell at gmail.com. Again, that's universe in a seashell at gmail.com. And don't forget to download your very own sky watching kit. Thanks.